Hey there everybody, it's Rad. Today I'm going to be drawing pumpkins. So I'm going to be drawing these Jack B. Little gourds. They're, as you see, very small. Each segment has a curve to them, so I'm going to include that in my drawing. I will be using the color wheel as my guide, and I'll be using blue and purple for shadow, and I'll be using yellow to make things brighter, and I'll also be using analogous colors of orange, so colors next to each other on the color wheel, like yellow and red as well. I'll be using a drawing pad by Fabriano, which uh, has a very nice texture to it. I'll be drawing with these oil pastels called crepas by the brand Sakura. We'll learn to overlap the oil pastels in layers of color. By the way, this also works with crayons and colored pencils. All right, here we go. So the first thing to do is to do a sketch. Now, I have this one here tilted for a purpose so that you could see what I see. So basically when I'm looking at this, I see the top and I see the side, right? So I want to include that in my drawing. I want to be able to include this whole area here and the stem, but also the side view, okay? And I want that to look three-dimensional. And I want each section to stand out and look three-dimensional. The one thing I want to point out to you is the proportions of this Jack B. Little. They are on the short side. You know, if I do this and I put my finger here like that, keep my finger in its position, turn this around, you'll see it is substantially wider than it is taller. Here we go. The first thing to do is to find that squatty short shape. Notice I'm going to draw it bigger than it actually is. So that's the first thing. Then find the place where the stem comes in. So it's this general area here. Right? I like to draw that first segment right in front. Then I'll draw the other ones. So I'm going to start this line at the stem, come around, hold up. Here's what to look out for. So you've got that, you've got the stem, and then you've just drawn lines across. For a couple reasons, that doesn't really look three-dimensional. Here's why. First of all, you're negating the fact that these are all curvy and should be drawn as such. So there, I just fixed that. So if you do do that, there's ways you could fix it right on top of it. And no worries, because we're gonna do a lot of layers. So if you make a mistake and do these lines like this, you can fix it. The other issue is that, again, it has to do with the fact that it's not dimensional and these lines are straight and you just wanna curve them out. And again, underneath here should be curvy. Notice this one is at this level and this one is at that level and then this one's at that level. The ones in the back will be like this. We'll just be like little bumps. And then this one I'm gonna fix, and then this one's gonna come down actually like that. Let me do this again here so you can see what I'm talking about. So again, you've got this shape there. That's the main shape in the front. Then the next one comes in and it tucks in like that at a higher level, okay? Those are things to look at, things to notice. The next contour line and again, I'm not basing this exactly on this. This one has more segments that I'm going, actually going to draw. Then I'm going to do this next section there. And it's symmetrical, so the same on both sides. Look at how it curves in. It's at a higher level than, the, than these two. Then the last two, or maybe three, will be that, those two, and then one over here. Let me go over the stem so it stands out. This part of the stem is being covered, but this part I could see. There you go. I have drawn the sketch, and then I have drawn the contour. My first layer is with the local color. The main color something is. So here I am using the orange, which I already started with, and it's a nice tone for this orange already. It actually kind of matches this. Watch this. I'm pressing really light. Don't press so hard because when you put another color on top of it, it won't accept that color as much. and You won't be able to mix other colors with this tone. 
you're gonna do a layer that is soft and not so perfect. At this point, we're not worried that it is not filling in all the little crevices like this does. Well, we're gonna get to this, but it's gonna be like this, but with full color in there. Notice that I am filling in each section, each segment separately because I want to treat them as, as their own individual people almost. I want them to look different from each other. So that's something else to notice. I'm not going like this and just coloring this in as one unit. I'm considering the fact that this has different segments. The next thing to do is get yourself a red, which is the analogous color of orange next to each other. You could think of them as the neighbors. And I'm gonna put this in this section here. It's as if this section is sticking up and creating a shadow on the one behind it. So that's the idea and the same for each segment. So this one, this bump is creating a shadow back there. Notice it's not just a line like this. It's not a line. It's actually coming out a little bit further and not so perfect. And as I go this way, maybe it's gonna get a little bit lighter as I go out. So fill in here, fill in there. And this bump here is creating a shadow on this one. I started to put a line there, but then I went and filled out into the orange, maybe almost halfway into the orange section between here and here, between here and here and so forth. All right, so you're gonna notice that uh, this is gonna look kind of odd for a while until I get to the next layer of orange. And then everything will come together and it's all gonna make sense then. All right, the next one is gonna be yellow. It's the analogous color of orange on the other side and it's going to brighten things up. So where could I put it? As you probably figured out already, not on the red, but on the section that's supposed to be brighter or catching more light. So not on the red section, but within each section on the opposite side of each section. Here in the center one, I'm gonna put it on the left and I'll maybe put some on the, on the right. And this one, I'm gonna put it on that right side, right side, scribble it in. It's all gonna to come together later. All right, so for now, I'm gonna take a little break from the gourd itself, from the pumpkin, and I'm gonna work on the stem. Wow, I've got an olive green here. Now, not all basic sets might have that, so I'm gonna go ahead with this bright yellow and show you how this is done, actually, with color. I'm going to go in with the royal blue, as most sets have, and I'm going to decide that the shadow, just like this uh, gourd here, if you look at uh, this one, it's lighter on this side and casting a shadow on that side. This is called a cast shadow or a drop shadow. If I place my hand over this paper, you'll see the lights that I've got in this studio casting shadows below it. That's a drop shadow. All right, so I'm going to put blue because it's a sh shadow color on this side of the stem. You see how that looks 3D, even with just two colors? I'm gonna add a little bit of violet or purple on that right side and it's become already a darker, duller color, sort of like the olive green I had there. Like I did before with the yellow, I'm gonna brighten up the left-hand side a bit of this stem. I'm even gonna go ahead and put some orange in there. Like every, practically every color's gonna come in here. And that's gonna dull things out too. I'll even try a little bit of red. Now, when you put a little bit of red on green, it makes this color, basically, olive green. This is kind of a light olive green. It's got some white in it. So I'm gonna put some over here on the dark side only. If you put too much of this, it's gonna stand out too much and you just want this to blend in. So. In a minute, I'm gonna put the green on top of this and you'll see how it all comes together. 
So here we go, I'm gonna press softly because I don't wanna push off the layers. I want them to now just blend in. Do so here and there. I think I'm gonna try this lighter yellow on that side and over here too. So I'm getting some smudges on here, so I am going to use this paper to keep me from smudging too much. Let the smudges be on here. Now I'm gonna try some magenta or some purple and I'm gonna put it only in the deepest, darkest crevice. Sort of when you look at this, there's like a thin line here of darkness and there's a big section here of darkness. You could look at the one here and see for yourself because this one is tilted at your angle. So I'm gonna put this on the deepest, darkest section of the red only. I could also try a little bit of blue, but I find with this project, it's a bit too much. As I said, this is looking quite odd, but it's gonna come together now. So I've got the light side and I've got the dark. I even on purpose, I don't know if you noticed this, left a little bit of sliver of white there. That'll be the highlight. As you see here, some little white specks that are catching light. Okay, so here we go. I'm overlapping this softly and already it's blending. And it's turning into other colors. In this case over here, it's turning into a shadow. Also notice I'm doing one section at a time. All right, so there's that and I left my highlight. Now I'm gonna to come to this side and fill in these areas. I think I'm gonna leave a highlight here, so I'm gonna work around that. You could decide where you want a little a bit of shine. Does it look shiny already? It should. Then I'm gonna do this one in the back. And this cast shadow I'm gonna put over here eventually, so look for that. Notice at this point, for the most part, it's filling in all the areas. Not so much here because, you know what? I actually was saving that for a little bit more yellow. There we go. It's also brightened it up. So, you're filling in all these little areas now with this next layer of orange. Oh, got some green on here. It's gonna add a little extra color. All right, so eventually I'm gonna put some extra shadow over here. And let me do these other sections. I'll start with this one. I kind of do these circular motions. Makes things a little bit smoother. This uh, gourd is smooth at the same time. It's also got bumps in it. Yes, something could be smooth and bumpy in the same time. Okay, I'm gonna leave this little sliver here of white. See that? Maybe a little bit over here too. Or actually, let me go in with the yellow. There you have it. Now, when I could go back and I could look at this and decide what sections I want to add more or less to, right? I'll get to that. Oh, I'm getting really down to the edge here, so I'm going to tear off a little bit of this paper. All right, filling in here. I'm actually going to take this darker orange since I have it, put it in the center. Let me go to the edge here. Circular motion. Now, this is the edge of the, the gourd, right? So make sure that this is a hard edge because that's what is here. It's not fluffy, right? It's not a fluffy object. This isn't a, um, a stuffed animal of a fluffy puppet or something, right? This is a gourd and it's got a hard, smooth, hard, smooth edge. All right, so I'm gonna fill this in. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of white over there. And let me fill in over here with some more yellow. 
Be careful I don't get too close to the purple because that will just make a brown. Opposite colors from each other in the color wheel. Um, when you place them equal in equal amounts, will make a brown tone. Earlier, I used a little bit of red with the green and that just made it a little bit darker green. But if I used equal amounts, it will turn into a brown as well. Okay, now let me go on this section here, just like the others, pressing over the violet or purple, and you see how it blends, and it just becomes a darker orange. That's what we want. As I come up here, I'm pressing a little bit softer on the yellow. I think I'm gonna put in more yellow here. Look how bright that looks. Pop in colors. And let me come in here with the orange, making sure I stay within this section of my gourd. See? If you need to press harder with your orange, this is the time. Now, except for the parts, I'm going to leave highlights, of course. I put more highlights on this side because that was the side I decided it was going to be catching more light. All right, so there you have it. Now I'm going to go and do the drop shadow and I'm going to use a purple for that or a violet. Magenta works great if you have it. So this is a curved object, see? So I'm going to go with the contour. I'm going to go with what's called the cross contour, the um, curve of this particular object because that's gonna make it look more three-dimensional by doing that. You know what, it needs a little bit of pumping up of red here. And there you have it. All right, now, if you did not leave some of these uh, white sections from the paper showing, I got some ideas for you. Watch this. I'm gonna take a yellow and I'm gonna purposely press so hard that I am going to push off the other layers. Like, let's say I do this here. Do you see that? Those layers just came off. I pressed so hard and I went down to the bottom of the paper and I got, I filled it in with yellow. That's another way of doing that. And in fact, you could also add white on here, but you have to be very careful. If you have the white, you can do it. You just have to place it right in the center of that highlight. And between here and here and here, and between each of them, actually, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the white to make sure it is fully white again before I get to the next one. Watch. So this is brand new, but I don't take any chances. I'm double checking. Sometimes it could have rubbed up against another one and got another color in there. So right here in the center, pressing hard. What it does is it just blurred it out a bit, right? Now, see this? I'm going to take this and I'm going to wipe it clean. It's always nice to have a little extra sheet of paper or a paper towel next to you to do this. Next one. You want to keep that center light. The edges could be a little bit blurred. And then over here. I'm not going to make this so perfect. Notice I had a little jump there between here and here. All right, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do some of this here on the edge of that. I'm gonna do a drop shadow underneath now. Sort of like when this is sitting, I see like a little bit of um, a shadow just below it, like my hand, right? So what I'm gonna do actually for this is I'm not gonna use the blue and purple. I sort of am but in a different way. I'm gonna use a pink and I'm gonna use a light blue. If you have it, then great. If you don't, you can use a blue or a purple, but you gotta press so softly in here and maybe overlap it with white if you have it, which I probably will with this too. So I'm gonna place this like this here 
And I'm not going to do all the shadows. I have multiple light sources. So I'm going to do just the darker one. And I'm going to press really soft. The reason why I like to use light blue and pink is because they make purple, right? There's red, which is the same thing as pink, and blue, which is the same thing as light blue, or as I like to call it, schmoo, because, um, you know, doesn't blue deserve to have its own name, right? Just like pink. Now I'm gonna overlap that a little bit with this blue and it should kind of make a lavender or something close to it. I'm gonna press a little bit darker in the middle sections or in the sections closest, maybe put more pink in, closest to the gourd. As it comes out away from the gourd, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Now, with when you do this, go light. So when you do the white, I'm going to start from the, the white paper side and move into the shadowy area. Watch this. I'm going to start over here, get the edges lighter, and as I get to the center, I'm not going to press so hard. I just want it to blend. Wipe that, because I'm gonna do this again to the next section. If you think it needs anything else, Take a look at your gourd. I mean, yours is gonna be different than mine. Even though you followed along with me, you are your own unique person. And you'll need to look at this and make your own decisions about what you should do. Now, you also have a peach here, and that could be used as well if you like in the lighter sections. All right, so there you have it. There is a gourd, a Jack B. Little pumpkin, made using the local color of orange, the analogous colors of red and yellow, shadow color purple and violet, and also a little bit of blue in the stem. Now it's your turn. I've got two words for you. Get cracking. <laughs>